to our service today, especially the guests who have joined us. We extend a welcome to you and invite you to join us again. A few announcements. Um, the Quarter Life will meet today at 1230 after church here at BJ's. And also the UTD group will uh, be meeting at 6 p.m. at Raising Canes. Today at 3 o'clock, there's an open house in the Faith Lutheran School. So uh, if you've got uh, some family or neighbors or friends, invite them to come to our open house at uh, 3 o'clock today at Faith Lutheran uh, School. Flag Youth Group meets uh, today at 5 o'clock. Please note that as well. We uh, follow the Divine Service on uh, page 184. Our opening hymn is hymn 564. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. strangers have risen against me. They do not set God before themselves. I will return the evil to my enemy. In your faithfulness, put an end to them.
be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of the end of all things and the day of your just judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you forever hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second last Sunday in the church here is from Daniel chapter 7. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed, and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. The epistle is from Second Peter chapter 3. Know this first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact that the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not look, overlook this one fact, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness 
but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick? or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to think about it, and then I want you to honestly answer it in your mind. And the question is this. What are you worried about right now? There are probably as many different answers to this question as there are the people of God here today. But I bet there will probably be some common themes to our answers. Maybe we are worried about the future of our country. That seems to be a pretty commonplace concern today. The most recent election cycle has certainly highlighted the deep political and cultural divisions in our country. It's almost commonplace to believe that the end of our once great nation is at hand, regardless of your party affiliation. Politically, we have become dominated by fear, anger, and pride. I doubt these feelings are going to subside anytime soon for anyone. Because the truth is, we have become like a people who only see enemies all the time. And when you are surrounded by enemies, what's not to fear? I suspect that many of you here today will also have worries of another kind. Especially with the economic instability that our nation is currently facing. Perhaps you're worried about losing your job. Maybe you're worried about finding a job. And if you've ever been in one of those kinds of situations before, it's a little bit stressful. It's likely, too, that a livelihood is not only necessary for your own well-being, but maybe that of others. You might have children that need you to take care of them. Some of you may be watching over aging parents, or maybe you even have a brother or sister who are on hard times. Loss of income could bring dramatic changes to your life, and needless to say, plenty of worrying with it. There are others yet who might be more worried about things a little less material. When we look out at the landscape of our people's culture, well, it's not like it used to be. Things have changed a great deal in the last several hundred years, and in many ways, not for the better. We have become a people who are obsessed with declaring good evil and evil good. What is necessary for the maintaining of civil righteousness has been cast off in favor of our own radical autonomy. So far down the hole have we gone that even basic concepts of what it means to be a man or a woman are no longer intelligible to us. And the worst part is, our culture has become nearly militant in its desire to induct even the youngest members of our society into the chaos. No wonder some people are afraid of the changing cultural tides. For where else will they lead but our own demise? Well, if you answer the question, what are you worried about right now? And these or many other things were that which came to mind. I want you to know that you are not alone. But there is something else today that you should be worried about far more than any of the things just mentioned. And maybe that's a little bit surprising. I mean, after all, what could be more worrisome than the political collapse of our country, the utter economic ruin of our people, or the intentional moral corruption of our youth? Well, there is something that's going to make all of these issues look quite small by comparison. Or at the very least, put them in their proper perspective. And that something is the return of Christ in the final judgment. The end is coming. And when it does, the world is going to come face to face with the disaster of its own making. And that disaster it will not be able to avert. Christ isn't going to return to make peace with the world. He is going to return to destroy it in the full, unrelenting wrath of God. When he comes again, whatever worries 
the people of the world currently hold, they will pale in comparison. No one's going to care about worldly governments anymore. They will all be powerless in God's presence. Our self-autonomy that we so congratulate ourselves with and the shameless lives of our people, well, they will have no standing before the absolute holiness of God. Whatever fears, whatever anger, whatever pride we have had in this life will seem as nothing when the day of judgment comes. And there will only be two realities to be experienced on that day as the word of God declares. Before the Son of Man will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate the sheep from the goat. He will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. No one, not a single person you know, is going to escape this great and final judgment. And there will be only one of two options. You will either be among the sheep on the right who will enter into eternal life, or you will be on the left among the goats. And you will be cast away from the Lord of life to live in the brokenness of sin forever. If there is something that people should be worrying about right now, it would be this. But we're so sinful, I'm not sure if hardly anyone is worried about this at all. And there's a reason for that. And it has to do with the fact that sinful people think they're going to be saved by their works. It's true. And this false belief, it cuts across all political party lines. It doesn't matter whether you think civil righteousness comes in absolute autonomy or some kind of conservative moralism. All sinful people try to comfort themselves with the belief that they are good people because of what they do. Just think about it. For the most liberal among us, it's the championing of social justice. For the most conservative, Maybe it's a return to past ideals. But the doing of these things will not save us on the last day. And I know that's, that's kind of hard maybe for us to hear, right? But I would expect that it wouldn't be easy. Because we are sinners. And while it's true that we as the people of God certainly want the world and, and, and us who live in it to at least recognize what is truly good, right, and just as defined by our maker. Yet will none of our efforts to keep any of these things save us. If it's up to us to deliver ourselves from the judgment that is coming on the last day, well, we will be condemned, and rightly so, because our righteousness is not God's righteousness, no matter how right we think any of us are. This is actually why Christ tells those on his left that they're being cast away from him. They appeal to their own good works as the evidence that they should be justified. They want to be judged according to their works. That's what the gospel lesson says. That's why they hold before God, right, their works that they've done. And they want it to be the basis for their righteousness. But those works... They will not justify, for they were and always will be done by sinners. They are stained with all manner of thoughts, words, and deeds that are contrary to what God truly desires. And when he looks into their hearts, he does not see that true fear, love, and trust in God, but rather fear of the world, love of the self. And trust not in God, but in man. And they will be cast away from the presence of God forever. Because the Lord will give them what they want. He will judge them according to their works. And they will be found wanting. For us who see what is coming, this is a thing to be feared. The desire to make oneself righteous before God based on our works is a deadly desire. And it's one that everyone is tempted to make, even the Christian. But 
there is some good news for us in the midst of the things that not only we commonly fear as we live our lives in the world, but also as we are awakened to the dread and the fear of that last day. And the blessing is this. Those things that we fear in the world, well, we don't really have to fear. And that dread and that fear that will come upon many on the last day, we do not have to experience those things. There is good news for us. And it's this. The Lord has conquered the devil and this dreadful world. And for those who are the sheep, they don't have to fear the devil and the world anymore. You don't have to fear the devil and the world. Satan is full of nothing but lies. Lies he wants you to believe like this. He's going to tell you there is no hope for you in the world. He's going to tell you, you're going to lose all the political and cultural battles and you will be lost. He wants you to be afraid. In the same way, the world will boast in its own self-righteousness. It will seek to persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. But what of these things? Are they not all the same things that the world tried to do to Christ? He was tempted with the vain glories of the world. He was lied about. He was persecuted. But did Jesus lose hope? Well, of course not. Because these things are but dust. And they are passing away. Instead, Jesus took these lies and these deceptions. He took these sins into his own flesh and died that their power might be undone. Because the power of the devil is sin, which results in death. Jesus died for the sins of the world, that they might not be held against those who come to him for peace and rest. You see, you will not find your rest in a political party. You will not find your rest in the self-actualization of our lives, nor in a libertine flesh. Those things will only lead to more lies and more death. Instead, you must find rest, true rest, in the Son of God who has loved you with an everlasting love. Because He's not come to make your temporal existence better in this world just to lose your life in eternity. He has come that you might begin to truly live here, but most especially so that you might truly live in eternity. That's what he's done by paying for your sins with his blood on the cross. Your trust in government, your love of your own life at the expense of the trust and love of God, those things have been paid for. And today, you are forgiven. Your God has called you forth from unbelief and slavery to sin unto faith and freedom in Christ. And now you belong to a new kingdom, one not of this world. You belong to the kingdom of God because right now you are robed in the righteousness of Christ which you have taken up in your baptism and which you will wear for all eternity. Nothing else in the world will matter more than this because eventually everything else will be gone. And the best part for you is that before you stands a future you do not have to worry about. Yeah, living under the law of God right before the day of judgment. That's a thing to be feared. But you've been set free from the law to keep it for your salvation. When that great and final day comes, and it will, you will stand before Christ, the mighty judge. And he's going to look at you. He's going to look right at you. And he's going to say, come join my people among the sheep. For I have called you by name and you are mine. And you will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
He's even, according to our gospel, is going to look at you and recount all that you've done in this life as God's people. For you have been set free to love even your enemies, to care for those who are hungry and thirsty, to visit the sick and the imprisoned. But unlike the world, Christ says that when you, the people of God, stand before him, and he says all these things, your response is going to be this. Lord, when did we do these things? And that will be your response. Because you don't need to be saved because of the things you do. What you have done in this life as a child of God has been done so from faith. A faith you didn't create, but which was given to you by the mercy and graciousness of God in Christ Jesus. And with this faith, all that God has brought forth in your life has happened because of His mercy. In the end, God will get all the glory on the last day. There is no room for our boasting, nor does there need to be. Because the last day is going to be a joyous day for you. When you receive the inheritance that is stored up for you without many merit or worthiness on your account. You are destined, because of the forgiveness of sins in Christ, to be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. And the best part is, you don't have to worry about that. Because it's not up to you. It was up to your Lord at the cross where he died to save you from your sins. So be not afraid in this life, even if everything were to fall apart. Don't worry about who your rulers will be or the crazy culture all around you. Whatever happens, you rest securely in the hope and the certainty that while this world is passing away, your life is being stored up for eternal life. You live not for the things of the world, but for the things of God, because you are a child of God. And when Christ returns, that will be plainly known to the whole world. And in the righteous judgment of Christ, you will be declared innocent and righteous because of that robe that you wear by faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed a day when your Son, Jesus Christ, will return in all his majesty and glory to judge both the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the eternal kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, that our faith may remain strong. Help us to persevere in faith and in holiness of living. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> Merciful Father, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love. You have committed to our love and care our fellow human beings 
and their necessities. Embolden us to give freely and generously to your church and to those in need. Help us to serve the sick and to bring relief to the suffering, comfort to the sorrowing, and peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, abide with those who are undergoing cancer treatment and other serious illnesses, especially Kathy, Greg, Christy, Troy, Heretta, Mary, Carol, Teresa, Dempsey, Dave, Chuck, Marilyn, Polly, and Rosie. Help them to rem remember that you are with them to bring comfort in the midst of all pain and suffering. Grant them healing and relief according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we remember before you Lisa, Christy, Frank, Herb, Fletcher, and Steve. Heal them and strengthen them according to your holy will. Send them your comfort and peace. Be their light in the midst of darkness and their rock of refuge in every need. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Heavenly Father, grant that all who come to the Lord's Supper this day receive your forgiveness in life. As we are united in a common faith, so also are we united in Christ as we partake his body and blood. Strengthen us with this holy meal that we may live every day by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be he with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to, to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me.
the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through, through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh.